Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. In today's video, we're going to talk about hand tools. What is the minimum collection you should take with you to keep yourself safe out there so you can fix your boat? I'm an older guy and I've been uh, doing my own work for all my life. So I've, like all older guys, I've got a huge collection of tools. Um, this boat, uh, just so much mass of tools, it's crazy. But they're all like my children, you know, I, do, I don't want to live without them. I might need that one sometime. But I decided to do a little video on tools because you definitely, definitely want to have some tools even if you don't know how to use them, because someone could help you with the knowledge, but if you don't have the tools, you're out of luck. And I think I would like to talk about the minimum tools you would take with you. Let's start out by talking about the quality of tools you should buy. There's a saying, buy once, cry once. In other words, buy really expensive tools that you'll have for your lifetime. And there's a lot to be said with that, particularly for hand tools, because We'll get into wrenches and flex and such, and it really matters. But you're going to take these tools out in harm's way. You're going to be treating them like no tool should be treated. Um, saltwater environment is tough on tools. So I have a whole different approach for my tools that I take on the boat. I buy most of it at Harbor Freight. Uh, I try to look through what they offer intelligently and by the good tools they have. They also have some really bad stuff there. So you've got to keep your eye open. But my idea is it's going to get corroded. It's going to get messed with. I want to get, you know, something that I can replace and not cry if I drop it in the ocean. The other end of that is the good tools aren't necessarily so great anymore. If you want good tools, you're really your only choice. <laughs> Uh, barring a few high-end toolmakers that still make good stuff, is go to rummage sales where there was an old guy with tools. If you find a rummage sale with tools, buy those old tools. Old tools are the best tools for two reasons. One, they made better stuff back then. And two, if they bought crap long ago, it broke already. The stuff that has served the, you know, the time has made it. But back to what we need for the boat doesn't necessarily have to be the best stuff. This is not what you're going to hand off to your grandchildren. This is going to be what gets you through the months or years of cruising that you have ahead of you. And you'll probably replace it every time you get an opportunity. So let's uh, talk about what you should get. Let's start out with screwdrivers. Screwdrivers are absolutely required. You're going to need them for so many things. And it's not just putting screws in. Um, they're like little probes. You can pick and poke and get into things and you're going to use them for so much. They're little pry bars, especially the bigger ones. And um, how many you need is a question. You, you need a bunch. <laughs> if you're like me, you need an awful lot of them. Uh, when I'm in the middle of three projects, I usually have screwdrivers kind of attached to those projects. And then I need to do another project and I can't find the earlier screwdriver. So I keep buying screwdrivers until I bought a package of screwdrivers that I don't open. And then I know that I have enough. Otherwise, I can't find a screwdriver, I open a new package. Um, for this video, I can't find my really big, heavy-duty screwdriver. I wanted to show it to you, but I, I don't know where it is right now. It's in the middle of some project somewhere on this boat. It'll turn up. It always does. I've had it for 30 years. It's a big old good craftsman back from the early days, flat, regular flat one about this long. And oh my God, is that thing useful. Um, beyond that, a, a good screwdriver has what this one has. I'll show it in this camera. Some way of putting a wrench on it. Let me just grab a wrench so I can show you. If you can have an arm on the side of a large screwdriver like this, that will turn the screwdriver, you can put 90% of your strength downward, holding it into the screw, and then the last 10% of your strength can actually be during the loosening, and you can break free things that you just can't break without stripping the head. So, particularly for the bigger screwdrivers, make sure they have some way of putting a wrench on it. That can be like a hex head here, 
Sometimes it's on the top so you can put a, a ratchet on it. It's convenient. Um, the really big screwdrivers, they have square shafts. Well, that's great. You can put a wrench on that. Um, so highly recommend you at least have a few that have that feature, both in Phillips and regular. Well, that brings up the next thing. What kind do you need? Obviously, you need the regulars and you need the Phillips. With Phillips, you definitely need a couple sizes because they are different. And uh, I guess with regulars, you need different sizes too for really small screws where this would mar up everything or not fit in the slot. There's also this. This is a Roberts and it is square on the end. It's a Canadian company uh, from long ago. They com competed with Phillips back in the uh, Model T Ford days and they have a superior product in my opinion, but it never caught on. Um, had to do with selling rights to Ford and things like that. So the Phillips took that niche. You got to decide if you are Roberts boat or not. For a while I was, because there's nothing better than putting a screw right on the screwdriver and it locks right on there and then reaching behind your head like you have to in a boat to put it in. I don't buy Robert's screws anymore um, because I had trouble finding the screwdrivers while I'm out sailing and you can't take things apart again without the proper screwdriver. This is my only Robert's drive. So decide if you want to be a Robert's boat or not and if you are, make sure you have Robert's drives around. This screwdriver is from Harbor Freight. It's cheap as dirt. Like they give it away sometime. I think when they sell it, it's like $1.99. And it's like four screwdrivers. It's got a, a Phillips and a regular large, a Phillips and a regular small. You just flip it around and put it back in. And you would think this thing would fail and get rusty and not come apart, but they do surprisingly well on a boat. So screwdrivers are the number one tool you need to have. You need to have it first. Next thing is a way to open up a nut. 90% of the time when I go out to do a project, what I grab is this screwdriver, because I won't even know what type of screws I'm going to end up getting, this little quarter inch drive wrench set. And if there's a third tool, like I think I have to get to the back, I just grab this crescent wrench. 90% of the time, this fixes anything. When it doesn't, I have to step up and I have those tools, but this would be the absolute minimum you should have on your boat. I jumped ahead a little bit here. Let's talk about this ratchet. Again, it's Harbor Freight. Uh, it has SAE and metric. Uh, I kind of wish it went to one size larger, but um, like I said, 90% of the time. You need the metric if you have a modern outboard motor because they're all metric. Um, you need the SAE if you have old stuff on your boat. If your boat was made in the United States, most of your fasteners will still be regular SAE stuff. Um, this particular ratchet has served me real well. This, uh, what do they call them? Pittsburgh. Um, the quality of a ratchet is like how strong it is. And I haven't had a strength complaint with these. It's whether it'll break and like this little uh, selector knob here. Um, some of these are plastic now. You, you definitely need your whole tool to be metal. And then the final thing, if you can hear this, it's how many clicks per degree. And this has a lot of clicks. And when you have a lot of clicks, if you're in some little space, you can go click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move, click, move. Where if you only have a few clicks, you have to go so far that you might be hitting something. So I've been pretty happy with this little wrench. I used to have the little quarter inch craftsman set and it was stellar when I left Seattle. And then it got a little bit messy and I took advantage of their replacement program back when Sears doors were around. And the wrench I got from them was brand new, not as good as the crappy one I had that had, you know, gotten salt water on it and such. So I thought I was pulling a fast one by doing the exchange, but uh, their wrench quality went down so much. I won't even have them on the boat anymore. Along with the ratchet, you need one of these. Might look like a screwdriver, but it's an extension. So you put the ratchet on and drive the bolt that's down a bit of a hole. This one's kind of nice because it uh, extends way out when you need it to. And of course, you can use it as a nut driver if you don't need a lot of torque to either tighten it down or loosen it up. Um, crescent wrenches. These are actually great, usually an adjustable type wrench, and we'll get into vice grips in a minute. 
uh, can cause problems. But a crescent wrench, or a facsimile, again, this is a knockoff, um, anything that keeps very parallel sides on the nut won't round the nut over like something that is more pliery and trying to just grab a hold of it. That will slip and round off the nut, where these won't. You just have to make sure you tighten them all the way down. And sometimes that might mean putting it on and breaking it free and putting it on and readjusting it and getting it tight and breaking it free and keep it doing that while there's still some torque so you don't hurt the nut. Um, on a boat, you're not going to be seeing a lot of steel nuts, regular nickel plated steel or whatever, except on the engine. What you're going to find is stainless steel or bronze or things like that. And these metals are a lot softer. So it's important to treat them really, really well. Make sure that the fasteners fit the wrench and that the wrench is well and truly bonded before you put a lot of torque on it because you can round them off. And once you've rounded them off, it's really hard to get them off. So you notice this wrench is well and truly rusted. Um, this one has been underwater multiple times to do a job while I'm wearing a, a hookah and I'm down there wrenching underwater. Things having to do with the propeller, for example. Uh, crescent wrenches are great because they open way up. I have bigger ones on board uh, because it's just so handy. Also, often it can be your longest single wrench. You don't want to try to bolster your wrench when you're, uh, when you're um, underwater, for example. So it's nice to have a big wrench so you are a stronger man than than you may really be. A little crescent wrench is handy for smaller nuts. It's just easier to get in and out. Uh, after you use these, particularly if you use them underwater or they got some water sprayed on them, particularly salty water, give them a rinse with fresh water. And then uh, once they're just a little dry, spray a little lubricant of some kind in them. WD-40 is usually handy. Uh, there are better ones to use, but uh, you get the idea. Treat them nice and they'll actually last a surprisingly long time in this environment. I can't say I've always treated this one nice, as you can see, but it's held up. For larger jobs or jobs where you can't be bothered with fussing around uh, in the spot to get the wrench right on tight, um, and honestly because they're easier, you need a set of regular open-end wrenches. Now, I put these in these bags because it just works out so well, and I highly recommend them. Just throw away the way the new wrenches came and put them in a bag like this. So I've got two sets here. This one is the same thing, but metric. And this gives me what I need to work on, well, the SAE stuff. This particular set includes a couple weird things. This is uh, stuff I need when I have to uh, adjust or reposition the engine, the end, big engine mounts. So those are specialty tools that are used with these tools, so I have them together. But it goes from very, very, very small wrenches on up um, with this roll. They all fit in a small place. I know where they are. And another nice thing about the roll is you can look at it and say, aha, everything's here that should be here, so you know when to put them away. In my case, it's one wrench per, except for these specialties at the end, and this one extra wrench I've added because it was an odd size I need a lot. Uh, and I shoved it right with its close mate. The metric set, I won't open up, but it won't go quite as far. And that's okay, because big metric uh, bolts tend to use the same size as the uh, American Standard ones. So for the few times you need the really big wrench, you've got those. Oh, let me show you another thing. Um, if you've got a wrench on something, make sure I can do this right. You got it on a bolt and you're trying to break through the bolt and you're just not strong enough. You need a little extra strength. Get another wrench and put it on there like this and you have a cheater bar. So two open end wrenches together give you a longer wrench to get more leverage. When you're done, just give them a little roll up and put them where you store your wrenches so they're available for next time. Pliers. Can't be without them. And they're specialty pliers like these are referred to as dikes or diagonal cutters or whatever you'd like to call them, but they, they're for cutting things and these are particularly useful for cutting um, wire ties, but you'll use them a lot. And then um, 
needle nose pliers. Can't live without them to reach into little spots. This is a, a tool I picked up at West Marine years ago, and it's kind of interesting because it's kind of two kinds of pliers. I never use this end, it seems. I only use it as a needle nose. Um, so you might think it'd be awkward, but it has a nice handle. And most importantly, you might notice this one's a little sticky. I haven't used it in a while and it needs a little lube. This one's never gotten sticky. It's held up to the marine environment really great. So anyway, that's why I have this one. Along those lines, you need vice grips. Um, vice grips are handy for when something gets messed up because you can break it free. Sometimes because a wrench wasn't put on right or it just stripped. This gives you hope of getting it free. It grabs irregular shapes and that's really good because you run into irregular shapes and things you need to grab. But this is not your first resort. If you use this first, you probably will destroy the nut and then you won't be able to do anything with it later. So this is more of a last resort. I always carry these little vice grips. Um, I use these an awful lot, more than you would think. They can reach in very precisely and both vice grips have another advantage. They give you a pretty tremendous squeezing improvement of your strength. I mean, obviously you can't just crush something, but if you needed to get in there and get a hold of something, a vice grip is stronger than regular players because of its little mechanical advantage. Can't tell you how many times I need to get the head of a, a screw or something and break it free before I can get it loose. And this has saved the day. I've gone so far, I don't have it here right now, but I bought a stainless steel version of the vice grip uh, that comes in a little everyday carry kind of a deal. And in its handle, there's a jackknife and a screwdriver. So it's kind of trying to be a Leatherman. Um, it's a nice tool. I don't use it though. I, I just me. Uh, if you carried one of those around, it would be a really handy tool to carry. Finally, though I've said uh, buy knockoffs for things, don't buy knockoffs for vice grips. Buy the genuine vice grip from Irwin. They are superior and they will screw up the fastener a lot less. It all has to do with how much the tool flexes and the metal that's used to make the tool. And um, it's one of the times just buy the real Irwin vice grip. And surprisingly, the Irwin company, who makes very nice tools, isn't terribly expensive. I've been very happy with everything I bought from them. Probably last on the hit parade of something you can't live without are Allen wrenches. Allen wrenches are kind of like a reverse wrench where this looks like the nut and the, the actual nut uh, looks like the wrench. It's kind of like a socket backwards. You're going to need these for so many things and you're going to need metric and SAE. Again, I got these from Harbor Freight. These do 99% of everything. I do have a big set that I had to buy because I needed some weird off between this and this kind of a wrench. And the thing with Allen wrench is you need the right size. You can't be close because you'll just strip it off, particularly if the nut is stainless steel. Remember how soft that is. So that would be the minimum I would take with me to go sailing. Be the minimum I would take to even go day sailing. Um, maybe not the big wrench set if you didn't expect an engine problem. But it doesn't take months to ruin your day. Uh, one little broken fastener, and uh, if you don't have the tools to get it apart, get a new fastener in there and put it back together, you might be without the use of, oh, I don't know, a turning block or something that you need to sail the boat. So you need the tools. If you're gonna be out for any period of time, something's gonna break. It's a boat, that's how it works. And this would get you through 90% of problems. If you're the kind of guy that hires people to fix things, this might be all the tools you need because anyone you hire will come with his own tools to do the bigger projects. So I guess that's my review on the minimum must-have tools to start out your tool collection. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video and you want others about it, I could do other little short videos on the whole tool thing. I've got power tools. I got some big ass tools. I've got electrical tools. <laughs> I have so many categories of tools. Uh, and I could do a little introduction and show you what I have and what I carry. I hope you liked the video and uh, bye from Temptress.